Hi, I'm Dave. Thanks for joining me again on YouTube. I own about 350 CDs, not so many in this day and age, I suppose, but um, about 40% of those CDs are blues music CDs. So 60% uh, obviously are non-blues music CDs. And so I suppose, like many people, I have a fairly wide taste in music. And so I thought I'd share with you my top 20 non-blues music CDs from my collection. They're in alphabetical order, no other order than simply alphabetical. Um, I hope that there is something here that you recognise, maybe something that you don't recognise and want to explore. That would be great. If you have any comments um, about my selection from my collection, then please do so uh, as you wish. Um, I personally have never ridiculed anybody's taste in music. It is very subjective. One man's meat is another man's poison, as they say. And so, hey, it's what makes the world go round. Anyway, here they are, my top 20 non-blues music CDs from my collection. Enjoy. So from, uh, from the start, uh, in alphabetical order, as I say, America, this is their first album, dates from 1971. If you like uh, tight harmonies, some very nice acoustic guitar playing and excellent lyrics, then uh, they're well worth listening to. Uh, several other albums followed after this one. I have this on vinyl as well. Uh, and um, uh, it's, uh, it's an old album, of course. A Horse With No Name was the most famous track from this, but I like all the songs on this, and it remains my favorite album of all of their works. Uh, the next uh, album is much more recent. This dates from 2016. It's James Arthur who won the UK version of X Factor, I think, in 2015, perhaps. Um, he did not cope with the fame that was uh, landed on him overnight, really, and he went into a bit of a recession. And this album, Back From The Edge, tells a story in some very well-written songs, real heart on the sleeve stuff about how he managed to come out of it. And um, I've got a lot of time for this album. It's the only, he is the only artist I've ever sent a vote in for, for anybody on the UK X Factor. Praise indeed from me, at least. So this is the Black Keys. Uh, my, uh, one of my son-in-laws introduced me to the Black Keys and I really like their kind of off-key singing uh, there's something attractive about it. Um, the songs are straightforward, some almost unfathomable, but uh, I do like this mysterious sound that they get. Um, the Black Keys Attack and Release dates from 2008. I have other material by the band, but um, this is one of my favourites by them. J.J. Cale is up next. Uh, this is his very first album, Naturally, it's called. Uh, nearly all of his albums are entitled with just a single word. This dates from 1972. Um, I have a whole load of music by J.J. Cale. I absolutely love that kind of soft, bluesy rock stuff. Uh, some nice songs, bit of an influence on Eric Clapton, I gather, over the years. And so uh, this is in my top three or four albums of all time, J.J. Cale, Naturally. Here's someone who I've been to see a couple of times in the UK. This is Bruce Coburn, and my favourite album of all his work, and I have about 12 albums, is Inner City Front. That might spark some debate because a heck of a lot of his albums are very good. A life observer, I would say, this guy is. Writes some very clever protest songs, as well as love songs, very good instrumentalist on the guitar. Bruce Coburn, if you don't know him, I think you believe he's Canadian, French-Canadian perhaps. Um, terrific songwriting and uh, love this to bits. And this is Dire Straits, very first album. I awoke one very early morning about 2.30 uh, to hear Sultans of Swing being played on the local radio station and I knew right away that that style, that uh, Mark Knopfler's guitar playing was was new at the time. It dates from um, 1978, this one, and I will spark debate by saying I think this is their best album, although their other subsequent albums are terrific as well, but this one holds a special place for me, Dire Straits' first album. 
Bob Dylan's Slow Train Coming is the next one up and uh, this uh, kind of started his move towards a religious theme in one or two of his later albums but with Mark Knopfler on guitar I really like this album Slow Train Coming meaning there's a realisation that uh, God is amongst us although I'm not a religious person but I do love the playing and the songs on this album and uh, it's one of his later uh, uh, offerings of course uh, this one dates from 1979 and he'd been on the go a lot longer than that but uh, um, later albums uh, I enjoy as well as his early stuff so Bob Dylan's Slow Train Coming Donald Fagan The Nightfly terrific album Donald Fagan of Steely Dan of course uh, some very nice playing on this uh, semi jazzy I would say but some great lyrics um, very listenable, late night stuff, uh, obviously, by the title, and uh, have other music by Donald Fagan as well as Steely Dan, of course, but uh, this is a favourite of mine, Donald Fagan, The Nightfly. Marianne Faithfull's Broken English album uh, dates from 1979, and there's some, uh, some very... Uh, crude wording and language in this but uh, it's a rocking good album um, it's uh, a departure from some of the softer rock stuff that she used to do way back in the 60s and 70s but um, I've got a real soft spot for this album Marianne Faithful, Broken English So this is Faithless, uh, Insomnia The Best of Faithless I really like this repetitive, although changing, electronica throughout the songs. Some of the songs are nice and long, you can get into the rhythm of them. Um, I love the male vocalist, the musicianship throughout is very electronic, of course, in many cases, and some really nice guests appear on some of the tracks. Uh, a lot of time for this band, have one or two other albums by them. This is Insomnia, the best of Faithless. Linton Quasi Johnson forces of victory well this goes back to 1979 you can see i bought a lot of stuff in the 70s um a real observer of black life perhaps i think in london uh some very good protest songs about the injustices uh, delivered on black people by the authorities a great poet uh, other albums followed but there's some lovely brass work in this uh, album, some great lyrics, and uh, one of my favourite albums. Linton Kwesi Johnson, Forces of Victory. Well, this is John Martin, and I like an awful lot of John Martin's music. Some of it's... Some of it's a bit inaccessible, I think, but most of the songs he writes are very well-written songs. He writes some great love songs. A terrific uh, guitar player. I've seen him in concert. This one is a compilation album. Uh, this dates from 1994. It's on Island Records. Um, John Martin's Sweet Little Mysteries, an island anthology. Yeah, a lot of time for this guy, too. Uh, so many of you will recognise this one. It's Bob Marley and the Whalers' Exodus, uh, a terrific reggae album. My favourite track is Waiting in Vain. Uh, I love the sentiment behind uh, somebody waiting for somebody that they admire to come their way and uh, waiting in vain for a long time for that to happen. But um, it's a great song. And uh, all the other songs in this album are top quality reggae stuff. I love it to bits. Bob Marley and the Whalers, Exodus. Imelda May, up next. Uh, this one is Love Tattoo. Uh, dates from uh, 2007. This is kind of body, bluesy, rocky stuff. And a terrific band behind her. Some nice songs on it. One or two albums to follow, uh, which I also purchased. But um, a great singer. And some lovely songs on it. You can tap your feet to this one, all right. I'm not sure that many people will recognise this guy, Steve Rue. The album is called Steve Rue. There's no other title to it. Um, clearly he plays a Gibson Les Paul. I just love the playing on this album. I stumbled across it in a record shop, thought it looked interesting, as a lot of albums are, where you see a solo guy holding a guitar, you think, hmm, I bet he can play a bit. And he can. And um, there's nothing special about this album. Some of the words are good. Um, 
you can change the clock, but you can't turn back the time. One of the one of the lines in one of the songs, and there's some real gems in amongst these songs. So, uh, Steve Rue. Much more recent, of course, Gil Scott Heron's I'm New Here. I think possibly the last album he recorded before he passed away. Um, this one dates from 2010. Well, there's some spoken songs in this which really come across well. His voice is deep and hoarse, um, possibly from smoking too many cigarettes, who knows, but a wonderful artist down through the years. It's the only album I've got, and I'm very pleased to say that I made the effort to go and seek this one out. Gil Scott Heron, I'm new here. Ah, oh, well, one of my favourite bands of all time, this is Steely Dan, this is Gaucho, uh, a much later album than some of their early stuff, all of which I have either on CD or vinyl, Pretzel, Logic, uh, The Royal Scam, fantastic music throughout. Um, Gaucho dates from 1984 and um, yeah, terrific sound quality on this CD as well. I always like the production on this when I play it. Have it on vinyl too. So Steely Dan, Gaucho. Uh, this is Robin Trower. It's a double album actually, but the one I really want to uh, expound upon is Caravan to Midnight. Uh, I just love this album for some reason. Uh, great playing on it, great songs. Uh, Robin Trower, Caravan to Midnight. So just two more to go. Uh, this is Neil Young uh, and Crazy Horse, Zuma. Uh, I love all of Neil Young's music. Uh, I like the acoustic one, Comes a Time, but I've got a lot of Neil Young's music. I love that kind of, a bit like the Black Keys, that kind of off, almost off-key voice that he sings in. Uh, I just love that. Um, it's so different. Uh, terrific artist. Uh, very prolific. Uh, Neil Young with Crazy Horse and Zuma. This is one of Tony Joe White's albums. This is Closer to the Truth. It dates from 1991. Um, I have nearly all of Tony Joe White's music uh, on CD. I don't think I have any album, vinyl albums by him, but I love his guitar playing. I love that kind of swamp thing that he does. And the um, latest album I bought was Hoodoo, I think. Maybe there's one after that, but that was the latest one. But I've never stopped buying Tony Joe White. 